RC, before we go on, we have a rather timid uh, group here because we don't have that many questioners. So I want to encourage <laughs> those of you to come forward. Now, you've heard the old saying that uh, there are no stupid questions. RC doesn't believe that. I know, that. but I think I'm about to hear one. <laughs> <laughs> that, RC, that was not the segue I was anticipating. <laughs>
So how do we make distinctions between the truth revealed to us in Scripture versus truths or facts we discover in natural revelation or through human experience, for example, laws of logic, scientific discoveries, etc.? And uh, this questioner says, you can let R.C. take a shot at it too. <laughs> I can what? You can take a shot at it too. Oh, good. <laughs> I won't need to if you do it right. <laughs> Of the one-liners. Well, we might as well just save time, and you go ahead and answer it. You know, I've been very interested in sanctification, studied it many times. It's just the first time in my life I ever heard it related to a hop along Cassidy. <laughs> but I needed to ask, are, are you referring to the football player or the cowboy? The cowboy. The cowboy. Yeah. Hop along. Yeah. You didn't know there was a football player by that name, did you? Well, it's a cultural thing. <laughs> but the, uh, I was really His just mother didn't let him watch I wonder about so. John preaching 5,000 sermons. He, he, doesn't, he hasn't learned the trick. I have five sermons, so I preach each one of them a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. You know, seriously. <laughs> Too lazy. <laughs> Most of these questions are directed at uh, John. They want to know how he really feels about Joel Osteen. <laughs> he did prevaricate a lot. <laughs> you know, I love it when I hear questions that I've never heard before in my whole life, which is, you know, we, we've been listening to the same questions for 50 years, and, well, at least I have, you haven't. But... <laughs> And when you get a new one, it's really exciting. So, John, you'll like this, because you have never heard this one before. If Samson was to never touch a dead body, how's come he killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey? <laughs> Bet you never heard that one before. No, I never heard that one before. I'm not sure I needed to hear it now. <laughs> well, we're going to redeem the time. And I'm not going to sort through these. I'm going to let the order be established by the providence of God. And in that uh, wonderful providence, the first question, the Lord doesn't want that one. <laughs> so how would you explain to uh, a layperson who is uh, on the fence and confused about whether these are issues that we need to be standing firm for? Well, in one sense, we don't need to be involved with reconciliation because the one necessary prerequisite for uh, reconciliation is estrangement, and we don't have any of that. Now, how do we reconcile the different views that we have, like on baptism? Well, so far we haven't been able to do that. <laughs> the only way that can happen is if one or all of us change our position on the thing. And so I'm willing to wait. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm working hard to think of a stupid question that I could ask. <laughs> no, I, 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 listen, I, I, I played golf with you a few years ago, and um, you certainly weren't at that point playing the game that you played before and that you loved. And I just want to deal with the truth, and I know you do too. Is it true that you got a hole in one recently? No. But here's another one for you, uh, R.C. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll answer it for you. <laughs> so it's just in the interest of time. That's fine. What do resourceful, remorseful parents do who realize that they blew it with their children? Repent. That's a good one for you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Repent and believe the gospel. Absolutely Is right. Is that your answer? That's my answer. Okay. Let's go. Wait a minute. You just put about five down there on the floor. What? You, you, you just dropped about, more than just me. You dropped about four or five of them. That's again the promise of God, doesn't oh, okay. it? <laughs> Some people th think that the Presbyterians are God's frozen chosen. But the Baptists, like Steve Lawson, have a little bit more room for such uh, expression. In fact, somebody asked me this morning, 
did Dr. Lawson suffer from mental illness? And I said, no, I really think he enjoys it. In Acts chapter 18, when you come across Apollos, it is mentioned that he was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. And then later we are told that uh, Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And that's a great model right out of the book of Acts for correcting an inadequate teaching. Apollos obviously did not mean to misconstrue uh, the issue of baptism. We need to expose false teachers who willfully and intentionally are attacking the very foundation of the gospel itself. Yeah, and Paulos did what, you know, what the best of his knowledge until Priscilla and Aquila told him to baptize babies. Uh, I, I was just reading this book of Acts. <laughs> R.C., is it true that you now publicly hold a post-tribulational view? That I do what? I was told to ask you this. Is it true that you now publicly hold a post-tribulational view? A post-tribulational view of what? I believe the return of our Lord Jesus. Well, the returner of the raptures. Is this post-trib rapture question? Is... I'll just let you answer it the way you want to. Well, <laughs> is it true that I publicly now hold to uh, a post-tribulation return or rapture? Probably rapture is the yes. issue, yes. So that's usually when you're using the, right. the pre and post. Do you or think mid they mean with... post-millennial? No, I think no, it's they're asking about tribulation here, okay? Well, the suggestion, the suggestion that I now hold, hold to it... Could you just tell that, us what no means in that <laughs> sentence, <I'm seeing. laughs> Are you being that or are you becoming it, R.C.? Well, it's, it suggests some kind of shift in my thinking, you know, doesn't it? And also, it suggests that, like, I'm coming out of the closet. <laughs> because the next time I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture will be the first time I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. Please give us the two or three books that have impacted you most besides the Bible. Uh, number one is easy, The Five Fundamentals of the Golf Swing by Ben Hogan. <laughs> you know, I was, I was on a, I gotta tell you this, Peter, I was on a train once, and, and you know, in the, in the dining room, a dining car in these trains, they seat you with perfect strangers, and I was seated uh, uh, next to this elderly woman, and across from the uh, me and from this woman was this young, younger, 20-year-old something, 20-something-year-old girl who was so excited and enthusiastic because she had just spent a year at a new age camp. And she was explaining to the woman next to me how uh, what she discovered in this training was that she was God. And she was all excited about this discovery. And I'm just behaving myself, eating my lunch. I, I, don't, I don't say a thing. I'm listening to this. I can't, can't believe it. And this elderly lady is trying to be nice and polite and shake her head to this girl. And, and the, so this young woman kept looking at me to see if she was going to get a reaction from me. I didn't say a thing. And she, she finally couldn't stand it anymore. And she says, what do you think? <laughs> and I said... I said, I, I'm just sitting here in utter amazement. This is the first time in my life, apart from the Lord's table, that I've been able to sit across the table from God himself. <laughs> or in this case, herself. And then I looked her in the eye, and I smiled, and I said, <clears throat> you really don't believe that you're God, do you? <laughs> and I did. And she looked at me, and she said, well, no. <laughs> Oh, 
a year of indoctrination down out the window. Yeah. Both of my brothers are unsaved. One believes there is no such thing as sin, therefore there is no need for a savior. How do I answer this question? How do I explain sin? Steal his wallet. <laughs> but there's a whole theology out there that says that such is possible. And if you close your eyes right now and just let your mind wander, see how many diseases you can think of. <laughs> and how many parts of America you can think of. You have the gift now. I do have a question for each of these men. Can I ask my questions? Did you turn it in? I do. Is I did not here? turn it in. I was assuming that because I was sitting so close to them that I could, and because you do such a great job leading in every aspect of this conference, and because I feel so comfortable with you, uh, could we have, and I'm sure I'm representing the majority of individuals present when I just say, could we have a finish to the story about Luther and the steps. You, you really have a difficulty with living in tension. You even had to tell us that you survived the plane crash before <laughs> <laughs> you got to the end of the story. <laughs> Just caring for the people. No, I, I never got, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get on the stairs. I never made it up the stairs because, because there were the so crowd, many people. There was, the crowd was so huge. Uh, There's this thronging multitude that I, 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 my whole pilgrimage ended in failure. I wasn't able to do it. So how long did you stay there, and what were you thinking as you stood there? I was thinking, boy, I ought to wait here until the crowd disperses so that I can go up these stairs on my knees and experience what Luther said, so I'll be able to give CJ a great ending to this story. <laughs> <laughs> we can't separate those, but we must distinguish them or all kinds of mischief but takes fully place. fully God, fully man, with all the reasonableness of man. Well, I prefer truly God and truly man, truly God and truly because man. it can be confused. One eternity later. That's why we like to say vera homo, vera deus, mm -hmm. truly God, truly man. You're that's with what, me That's what that. I meant. That, that's what I meant. Yeah, I knew that's what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> why, jo why, John? Johnny Mac, do you always make me have to define what you meant? <laughs> I mean, like you said, it's all happening outside the United States, the third world in Africa, South America, even in Eastern Europe, what's going on over there right now, and in China. Holy mackerel, what's happening there? Because, you know, this is the Lord, the, this is our Father's I can't world. I believe you said holy mackerel. <laughs> Mackerel are not holy. <laughs> That's left over from the old RC. That is. You got me there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Unholy mackerel. <laughs> Actually, it's not unholy either. It's just mackerel. mackerel. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, this friend of mine, this lady, that uh, she was trying very hard to have children. Uh, she couldn't. She was an immigrant from the old country and had trouble speaking the king's English. And she went and had a physical examination from the doctor and uh, trying to find out why she couldn't get pregnant. And the doctor said to her after the examination, he said, Madam, you have a tissue in your passage, and if you have a baby, it'll be a miracle. She came home, and her husband said, what did the doctor said? He said, I don't know. It's the sound of funny. He said, I had a fish in my passage. If I have a baby, it'll be a mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's starting to go south here, I think. <laughs> Please edit that from the tape. <laughs> I, I think it's amazing to be 72 and remember that. <laughs> but here's another one. Can God regret and wish, like God regretted making man, making Saul king, and uh, Jesus said, you know, will lament over Jerusalem, how often I would gather you as a hen gathered chicks, but you would not. You know, it's like he's saying, I wish you would, but you won't. Uh, I think you ought to answer that. That is right in your it wheelhouse. Is a, it is a kind of mm -hmm. RC That's an R.C. Sproul question. 
Well, you know, it's funny. I wrote it. <laughs> One book called The Hungry Inherit said, you'll get there, but you won't inherit. You'd be like, you'd be like, there'll be like a ghetto in heaven for, for non-lordship people. We call that ghetto hell. Huh? We call that ghetto you hell. You call that ghetto hell. I know. I understand that. You, you managed to get that word in there. I'm very proud of you.